Now turn to part one. Part one. You'll hear a telephone conversation between a travel agent and customer. First, you have some time to look at questions one to six. Listen carefully and answer the questions one to six. Hello, this is the National Express Transport Information Service Centre at London Heathrow Airport. May I help you? Hi. Good afternoon. Um, I'm calling from New York. Um, I'm flying to Heathrow Airport on Friday, and I need to get to a town called um Bath. Could you tell me how I can get there? Bath, right? Let me see. I think that's about one hundred and fifteen miles west of here, so it'll take about one and a half hours by train. Wow, it's quite a long way, isn't it? Yes, I'm afraid so. Right. Well, I don't really want to take a coach, I suppose. Can you give me some more information about the discount ticket prices that are available at the moment? Okay. How about an express coach shuttle service to Bath? It's faster than an ordinary coach, and the ticket price is not that expensive. Hmm. Can you tell me how much that would cost? Certainly. Let's see. It would be thirty pounds one way, or forty pounds fifty in return. Great. That's not too bad. It goes directly from the airport here to Bath, and it's pretty fast. But you have to bear in mind that there is only three departures a day, such as nine a.m., two p.m., and six p.m. So it depends what time the flight arrives. Oh, I see. We'll get there at twelve thirty p.m. Hmm, that's not too bad. The second bus leaves at two p.m., so you would have quite a wait. I'm just wondering, is there any minicab service there? I mean, a door-to-door -door service, because I will bring a lot of packages. Okay, I'll just contact the London cab office for you now. Do you know how much it will be? Just a moment. Let me check. It's eighty-five pounds for single fee normally. So that's about twice the price of the express coach shuttle services. Oh, that doesn't sound too bad. I will go for that then. Where will you stay there? Hotel or B and B? I'll be at Victoria Smith Hotel. Is it possible to make a reservation for that now? Sure. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at the questions seven to ten. Now listen and answer questions seven to ten. Right. So, what date do you want to book this for? I will arrive there on Friday, the tenth of October. And this is just one person, or two people, me and my sister. Right. Your arrival time will be twelve thirty p.m. What sort of credit card will you be using? I'm a Visa card holder. Could I have your sixteen-digit card number, please? Okay. Let me see. Double six o six double seven o seven one two one two triple zero eight. No problem. And what's your name, please? Olivia Turner. That's T U R double -N, N E R. Okay. Thank you, madam. Could you tell me the hotel address, sir? Okay. One hundred and fifteen Victoria Smith Hotel, Trowbridge Street, Bath. And the postcode, please. B A two. Six A Y. Lovely. Thank you. Okay, that seems to be everything. Have a nice trip, madam. Yes. Bye. Thank you for your help. You're welcome. Goodbye.
That is the end of part one. You now have one minute to check your answers to part one. Part 2 You'll hear a tourism program, Mountain Cycling Viking, celebrating an anniversary of the company. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen carefully and answer the questions 11 to 16. Thank you for visiting our company, Mountain Cycling Viking. This evening we will be celebrating our anniversary. Actually, we are so happy to see many people in the conference room. Let me start by giving you some information about the company and a brief history. The company was launched 50 years ago. It initially opened as a wholesale, selling mountain cycling equipment, and then from 30 years ago, it introduced a range of attractive cycling courses in the UK and started organising cycling holidays. Over the years, the company has developed and grown considerably and since 2000 has been offering family cycling holidays all around Europe. If you go on a cycling holiday with us, you'll have the opportunity to choose from hundreds of different sites. Nowadays, we manage 53 sites in rural Germany. We also have a number of promotions taking place in France. We are also making plans to expand into Scandinavia. All of our sites have been upgraded and we plan to launch more each year. We are so proud to offer spectacular sites and facilities for the whole family to enjoy. Also, parents who want to enjoy a holiday with their young children need not worry about keeping them occupied during the day as we have a lot of bicycles and equipment available for children under eight. Our kids' programme is organised and run by our well-qualified and professional staff and coaches. Each day the kids start with a short warm-up course and cooling-down course that is no more than five kilometres in a rural area not far from the central city. This programme includes an emergency first aid course and some bicycle repairs training. In the evening, there are different events to enjoy by the campfire, such as singing or dancing with refreshments. We have a no-noise rule after 10pm, so all children's events normally finish at 9pm. Security guards patrol the campsites from 10pm until 7am the next morning. The Mountain Cycling Viking also deeply wants all customers to register as members. If you haven't joined the company's membership scheme yet, when you apply you can get a 20% discount on all charges including the insurance fee. Also, you'll receive the company's monthly newsletter and promotional leaflets. There are many advantages to choosing Mountain Cycling Viking and to recommending it to your friends and relatives. As a regular customer, you'll be kept informed of special events for the holiday season and the friends who you recommend can get a 15% discount on things such as luxury camping facilities. In return, we'll offer you a souvenir. Before you hear the rest of the programme, you have some time to look at the questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. When it comes to our bicycles and camping facilities, we only offer things of the highest quality. 
We really do think of everything, from portable gas canisters and cooking utensils to tents and sleeping bags. If a member of your family doesn't want to cook in the cooking car, you are able to use a barbecue if you ask for it in advance. Also, we will offer a special cool box to keep food and drinks chilled. All of our sites are equipped with excellent washing facilities and places you can leave your children and pets. All sites have a cafeteria and shop in the central area of the campsites. Furthermore, we have a small hospital staffed by two doctors and three nurses who are very kind and caring. During the holiday, your guide will take anyone who is interested on a bushwalk through the mountain or teach an aerobics class free of charge. And now, allow me to introduce our president, Mr. David Gear. That is the end of part two. You now have thirty seconds to check your answers to part two. Part three. You'll hear a conversation between students Robert and Monica, and a tutor about personal marketing. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-three. Now listen carefully, and answer the questions twenty-one to twenty-three. Hmm, you've been looking at different styles of personal marketing in small companies and the workplace in the UK. So how's the coursework going, Robert? Well, I've been looking at why some people decide to run their own business. Market research shows that personal management is a critical area. When you think about any small business, it is usually a family business. They are also trained and developed as a group. Of course, they may have different ideas, but these ideas are based on their experiences and education. So it is critical that all members are able to brainstorm with each other. So, what do you think about differences of opinion in the workplace? Um, I think that there are many reasons why this can occur. The research, particularly, focuses on personality managing within a small company. Actually, it clearly shows the difference between men and women in terms of their methods and solutions at work. Right. So, did you research the effects of family members working together within a small company? Of course, I did. One advantage of this is being able to share thoughts and ideas with others in a way that stimulates the mind and helps save money. However, unfortunately, each new idea can cause controversy between employees and cause problems in marketing and management. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at the questions. Twenty-four to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-four to thirty. I agree, Robert. Now, two more things we need to talk about are personal talent and managing it effectively. So, Monica, did you have a perception of different talents among employees, and how do you think it is efficient for employers to work? In my case, teamwork is emphasised in the workplace, so the personal skills of employees can often be overlooked. The thing that employers should be targeting is an acceptance of other views and filter responsibility appropriately. That's right, Monica. However, unfortunately, many top managers think it is too difficult to make a unit when all employees' ideas are put together. I see, that should be the case. But I think one of the hardest tasks for employers is considering the wants and needs of each employee, such as finding ways of cooperating, compromising, and sometimes persuading the employees when they don't accept the target. So it requires creative and broad thinking with other people. 
So, what kind of people do you think are best for these companies? Well, the best solution starts from when the companies are looking for new staff. Of course, the responsibility of the human resource department should be to choose the best staff. Also, they have to learn and research personal management and psychological tests with confirmation of qualifications. It's so essential for them. So, how about if the best team members are overestimated? No, they're not overestimated. You just need to learn steadily if you're working in an organisation. Right. So, how should managers cope with this situation? It's a carrot and stick. If all employees are following the rules and policies of the company, a manager may give them an incentive in order to save time and costs. Also, the incentive can be either a working condition they want to change or money. Great. It's your turn, Robert. How important is it for a manager to be a good performer? Um, managing CEO means not only sharing all employees' thoughts, but also understanding the culture of the organisation. Actually, there needs to be a balance between creative minds and personal decisions during working time. Exactly. Well done, Robert. Thank you, sir. Clearly, sometimes it is hard for the managing CEO to control the system. For instance, they should manage the changes in the workplace caused by crisis. Or loss with caution. Right. Sometimes certain situations cause problems for the future management of the company. Do you follow me, Robert? Yes, I do. Actually, I have one more thing to say about high stress levels in the workplace. It takes time for a balance to be found between employers and employees. That's a very interesting idea. So, let's move on and talk about the marketing mix. That is the end of part three. You now have thirty seconds to check your answers to part three. Part four. You'll hear part of a lecture given by archaeology about art of Incan civilization. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer the questions thirty-one to forty. Good morning, everyone. The first workshop is in preparation for our anthropological fieldwork in the Incan civilization of South America. We are so happy to have received funding for separate studies for this field trip from our organization. So I shall expect over ninety percent attendance from you. In this workshop, I am going to begin by offering a brief introduction. To contemporary studies on wall painting, and in the second part, I'm going to show some examples of fieldwork. So please listen carefully. I'm going to focus on interpretations of wall painting art in Peru. Fortunately, we are going to explain an area where you can find some of the most critical sites in the world. And I deeply hope to show you how they were made. This is the first and most important chapter we must study. In Peru, there are both engravings and paintings. Many of the engravings show totemism, and most historians tend to think that the purpose of these was complicated and mixed. This wall art was like a museum guidebook with pictures to teach students about the artworks. They represent nature, sun, moon, wind, water, fire, and so forth. However, there were several mysteries. When you first see a typical Inca engraving or painting. You can see that the traps are sophisticated. There are tracks for the movement of nature. Today we'll learn how to make tracking. Now there are two more things to consider. Why are some of the engravings of natural phenomenon very delicate, but clearly ideological, and others realistic? 
Another mystery is some of the realistic natural phenomenon that's in the engravings. For instance, some have god faces. Many researchers now think that these are pictures that were engraved by the craft masters. They believe they could use the providence of nature they had drawn, so the hunters could then mimic them for prosperity. Most historians thought that the visitors looked at the wall paintings to understand their origins and solve the puzzles of the art and culture of the pictures. Now many scholars believe that the wall art was more about enchantment, and we'll learn more about them next session. In the third part of the workshop, I'd like to explain some of the implications of our explored prehistoric site and understanding the wall arts. We're going to visit lots of sites related to them. The single largest problem at these sites is visitors unintentionally touching and scratching the wall paintings. Whenever you go over to a site in Inca, you'll learn and conserve many things made from the Incas because they are of good value to prehistoric research. Through the field trip, these visitors are able to get an educational experience. And there are some essential rules to show you. There are traps that can happen suddenly and are very dangerous. Actually, they were a safeguard against enemies. So you should always follow the information board in the forest with a local tour guide. So, how are we going to feel the warm painting in our field trip? Don't forget, no touching, just leave it. The wall painting is fragile, and it is also a part of Peruvian heritage and a national treasure. This lesson is joining with a local community on the site. They run a special course and a trip around the historical site once a month. Obviously, scratching or touching on the wall paintings can destroy in a moment what has lasted for thousands of years of Incan civilization. Please try to be extra careful and look out for your mates. Look carefully everywhere, and lastly, please don't move any old materials to take a picture. Well, that's about all I want to say. But if you have any questions, please ask them now. Right? Do you have any questions so far? That is the end of part four. You now have one minute to check your answers to part four. That is the end of the listening test. In the IELTS test, you would now have ten minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Getting a band nine in IELTS writing is a challenging but achievable goal. Here are some tips that can help you. One, understand the question fully. Make sure you understand what the question is asking you to do. Identify the key words and instructions in the question, and brainstorm a list of possible points to include in your essay. Two, plan your essay carefully. Spend at least ten minutes planning your essay before you start writing. This will help you organize your ideas and ensure that your essay is well structured. Three. Write a clear and concise introduction. Your introduction should state the main topic of your essay and answer the question directly. Four. Support your main points with evidence. Use examples, statistics, and expert opinions to support your main points. Five. Use a variety of sentence structures. Avoid using the same sentence structure over and over again. This will make your writing more interesting and engaging to read. Six. Check your grammar and spelling. Make sure there are no errors in your grammar or spelling. Here are some additional tips that can help you get a band nine in IELTS writing. Use a formal register of English. Avoid using slang or colloquialisms. Be objective in your writing. Don't express personal opinions or beliefs. Use a range of vocabulary. Vary your sentence length. Proofread your work carefully. 
carefully before submitting it. It is also important to practice writing essays regularly. This will help you improve your writing skills and become more familiar with the IELTS writing format. You can find practice essays and sample answers online or in IELTS preparation books. Getting a band 9 in IELTS writing takes time and effort, but it is definitely possible. By following these tips, you can increase your chances of success. I hope